Hi guys, today I'll be teaching you all how to make this adorable teddy bear. You will need a 24 peg loom, a spool loom, yarn, fiber fill, plastic needle, and scissors. To begin, we're going to go ahead and make a drawstring cast on, which is what I'm doing here. It just requires that you zigzag the yarn in between each of the pegs around the entire loom. Then what I'm going to go ahead and do is take my fingers inside the loom and bring this down to the base of the loom. Then I'm simply just going to wrap the yarn literally around the entire loom. So you just want it on the front of the pegs or on the entire loom. You don't want to e-wrap it. Then using my purple hook, I'm going to go ahead and knit off each peg. But with this, you're only going to find that there's only going to be yarn on the fronts of every other peg. So you're only going to be able to knit every other peg. This is to create a drawstring so that when we make the body, we can drawstring it at the head and the top so that it'll be a, a full body. All right, after finishing that up and knitting everything off, I'm gonna go ahead and begin by just e-wrapping around the peg, around the loom, sorry, around each peg, but around the loom. And I'm gonna go ahead and knit for three rows. So you're gonna um, knit for four more rows. And then after you've knitted for four rows, this will be what it looks like. Then we're going to go ahead and begin to double knit. So how you do this is you're going to go ahead and e-wrap around each peg, but you're going to kind of use your fingers to move the e-wrap from the top of the peg down to about the halfway point, down to about the middle. And um, use your um, fingers in with you, you'll get into a rhythm and this shouldn't be too hard. You just want to make sure that it's low enough you can stick another loop on top of it, if that makes sense. All right, so now we're gonna go back and e-wrap again. So this time we're gonna be e-wrapping around the top of each peg. All right, so after you've done that, what you're gonna go ahead and do is take the bottom loop and place it over both of the top two loops. So you're taking one loop and moving it over two loops, and you're just gonna repeat this around the entire loop. This is a double knit stitch. It creates a tighter knit stitch, which is better for creating stuffed animals because it's easier for stuffing. Then the next row, you're just gonna e-wrap once around the entire loop. So you're just e-wrapping once the next row. Then you're gonna split the two bottom loops on the peg because they'll kind of be, the two loops on the bottom will be kind of cinched up as you can see here. And then once again, you're gonna take that bottom loop and place it over the top. You're going to double knit for 20 rows. So continue this for 20 rows until it will look like this. So you can really see the difference. The bottom has that single knit. You can see how wide it is compared to the tight 20, knit, 20 rows there. So now after you've done that 20th row, you're gonna take the bottom loop and place it over the top. So you will not need to e-wrap for, for this row because you already have two loops on the loom. So now you're just gonna separate those two loops and place one loop loop over the top. Now because I used a thinner yarn, I had to use two strands of yarn, but if you have thicker yarn, you can just use one strand of yarn and it'll be much easier to separate the two loops. All right, now I'm just taking those and moving them down to the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and trim my yarn about 20 inches and I'm gonna do a gathered bind off. This is traditional for making hats and such and you can use your plastic needle to do this, but I just find it easier to use my purple hook and do a purl stitch like maneuver to get the um, body off of the loom. Okay, so after you've taken that um, off of the entire loom, I'm just doing the last two, and you do want to cinch it up all the way. This will become the butt of the teddy bear. You want to leave the other side open though because we're going to need to put fiber fill in it, so you want to have one open side and one closed side. So I'm just going to tie off a knot and trim the edges. Now I'm going to go ahead and make the head. It's a very similar process. You're going to do that same gathered by non cast, uh, cast on, and I do have a video on how to do this. I know I'm kind of going quick here so just check in the links below I will link the video to do that now I'm just going again and after that cast on I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing do four rows of single stranded knitting and now I'm going back and doing the double stranded knitting so you can kind of see me I'm moving those loops closer to the bottom of the peg and now I'm gonna go back in here and for the second time e-wrap this time instead of doing like the body and what we did with the 20 rows of double knitting you're only gonna do 16 rows of double knitting so 
since the head is smaller and doesn't need to be as long. So same process, take that bottom loop, move it over to the top two, and until you have done 15 rows. So I've done 15 rows. Once again, you can see the difference between the single knitting and the double knitting, how tight it is. And same exact thing, we're gonna take that, you're not gonna need to you wrap on, uh, after the 15th row, you're just gonna take the bottom loop and place it over the top loop. All right, so we're gonna go ahead now, cut our yarn and do the same gathered bind off just as we did before. I will have a pattern link below, so you can check that out and um, look at that if that's useful as a reference for you. All right, so I've gone ahead and finished up the head so you can see the head compared to the body. Let's make the arms. So to make the arms, you're gonna need your spool loom. You're gonna be using the wide side of the spool loom. Um, because you don't have a central knob on here, I just kinda hold my yarn with my thumb, but you're just gonna be doing that same gathered by knob. Hope I'm making sense here, I know. I'm trying to make as much sense as possible. This does have a lot of crazy components. And this one, you're just going to single knit the entire time, so no need to double e-wrap or anything. And you're going to be knitting for 13 rows. Um, but after a couple of rows, what I like to do is take that kind of tail of yarn that I started with and slide it through the um, spool loom and kind of down through the tube and then use my fingers to guide it through the entire loom. Um, this is going to help the um, knitted project to try travel through that tube downwards so it makes it a little bit easier. So I've gone ahead and done my 13 rows which is how many you need to do for the arm. Likewise I'm just going to cut my yarn and then just do a gather bind off. This one goes so much quicker too when you only have like I think this is like a seven peg loom it goes so fast so you'll find these limbs are really easy. I'm just going to go ahead and take that off and then on one end of it what I'm going to go ahead and do is tie a knot and then trim off the edges and that's what I'm doing here. Then what I like to do is take this trim edge because I have about an inch tail is I like to open up the arm and just kind of stick it in there just stick the tail in there the fiber fill will kind of suppress that down there and you're done so I made the other arm let's move on to the legs for the legs it's so similar to the arm they're just longer so it's literally the exact same process except for more rows um, I've gone ahead and already done that um, that drawstring cast on as I like to call it or that gathered cast on. Now I'm just taking that yarn and placing it into the loom, that little yarn tail so it's easier for me. And instead of 13 rows, I'm going to do 16 rows so this one will be much longer. Then you can see I have my other arm already here and I just like to flatten these out a little bit. It gives them a little bit more width uh, which is easier. All right, so I've gone ahead and finished off those legs, tied off the knot, and clipped it. Let's go ahead and put everything together. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's what I'm doing here. Just like the arms, I'm doing a knot and then placing, cutting it off and placing it on the inside. All right, to stuff the legs, which is what I'm starting with, I suggest stuff starting with the legs and then going to the arms next. Just kind of stuff some fiber fill. I like to use my fingers to kind of mold it a little bit to the way that I want it to. And then after that, I'm just going to cinch up the top because it will be that gathered bind off. Off. Then I'm just going to go ahead and thread my needle and place that other end uh, that you just cinched up of yarn into the needle, if that makes sense. And let's go ahead and attach this leg to the body. So I'm going to start at that butt, that closed um, part of the body. I know it's silly to say this, but then I'm just going to literally attach the leg to the butt. Um, I'm just going up through the leg and then down through the body. And I did about five times on each side of the leg. You really want to make sure these limbs are are secure so that they don't come off at all you know the more times you can secure it the better the safer you're you're gonna feel all right so after I feel like I've really kind of gotten it positioned it's not really wiggly it's pretty secure in my hands I know that I'm done let's just do one more and down all right, so now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is kind of turn it inside out and do a double knot on the inside with my yarn tail and then just kind of trim off the excess there. You really wanna make sure this isn't gonna fall apart and I've already gone ahead and done that other leg. Same process, it's just on the other side of the, the leg. All right, let's move on to the arms. For the arms, it's really, 
exactly like I was saying, you know, I've already gone ahead and stuffed this one and cinched it up. Now I'm just using my yarn needle to attach it. For the arms, I like to attach it about two rows below the opening of the body. Remember, the, the top of the body is going to be cinched up, so you want to give it some room to be able to cinch up on itself. But, you know, just maybe a quarter of an inch below that. And once again, it's very similar to the um, legs. You just want to kind of position it like you want to. And I've already gone ahead and done the other one. Now I'm just stuffing the actual body with fiber fill. I'm just stuffing it up. You can see the, the more fiber fill you put in there, the stiffer the teddy bear. So if you want this teddy bear to be more pliable or not, it's your choice. All right, let's go ahead and make the ears for the head. This is the last thing you have to knit. You're going to do a gathered bind on, but instead of around the entire loom, you're only going to do 10 pegs. So you're literally going to zigzag to the 10 peg, do a U-turn, and come back around. Now for this one, literally it's so fast. You're only going to knit three rows for the ears. They really don't have to be big. So I'm just single strand ending for three years. Then I'm going to clip off my yarn. What I'm going to go ahead and do to bind off is take the 10th um, loop, place it on the ninth peg and knit off. Then I'm going to take the ninth, place it on the eighth, knit off. Eighth, put it on the seventh, knit off. And you can kind of see I'm just going each one. It's really, really easy and simple. And I'm sorry guys, I do have to be fast here just because I would literally be here for 20 minutes explaining this. I have to keep y'all interested, so I, I apologize about the speed of this. But comment below if you have any questions. Now I'm just going to go ahead and e-wrap one final time and then take this loop off of the loom. And I'm just going to go ahead and widen the loop and stick that little excess of yarn through it so that I really make sure it's everything is tightened up and there's the ear. So I've done the other ear. I'm going to go ahead and throw my needle through this strand that you see there and that's what I'm going to attach to the head. So let me kind of walk you through this. I don't want to put these ears on the very tip top of the head because it's going to look kind of funky. Kind of if you think about Mickey Mouse and how his ears are positioned, that's where you kind of want them off to the side of the head but not too far down. I like to attach the head to the ears about four times. I kind of took my needle in and out of the ear four times. Because they're not too thick you don't have too much to work with but now I've gone ahead and I'm going to be doing the faces. I just have a piece of black yarn that I've tied a knot at the end so that it won't come through. I've already threaded my needle and I'm going to do an eye on each side of the head. You can kind of see with this I like to kind of draw it out with my needle like I'm doing there where I want the next feature to be which helps me map it out in my head. I'm doing an eye on either side close to the ear. Then I'm going to be doing a triangular shaped nose and I'm going to go ahead and fill in this nose a couple times so that it's completely black and then you'll see I'll do a smile as well. Have some fun with this. This is the one where your creativity can really show through and your personality can show through so you can do different things. Then most teddy bears have like a little um line connecting the nose and the mouth so that's what I'm drawing here then I'm going off to one side of the mouth and at the end I did kind of those like little parentheses that you see at the end of the smiley face um, just adds a little bit of character and then I'm gonna do that to the other side now I'm gonna go ahead and stuff that teddy bear face after I've tied a knot to this black yarn and stuff it just like I would the body and cinch up the head so I've already done that here I've already threaded my needle to the um, yarn that was left on my head and I'm gonna attaching the head to the body. This part is crucial. You really want this to be secure. Seriously, I went around the head twice, really making sure I really secured it. Then after I felt like it was totally secure and wasn't coming off, I trimmed it, tied a little knot, and I'm sticking this inside the body. Thank you all so much for watching. Here's another bear that I did. I think these turned out so cute. Um, check out the video next week, which will be showing you how to make a panda bear. And then the week after that, we'll be doing mini bears. Stay tuned.